What's up, guys? Good afternoon. Hope you're doing well. I've already made a couple videos about the Geno Smith contract, the Geno Smith extension, the situation there, and I think we all know what's going on there. I think we all know that it's a positive situation for the Seahawks. Basically, after the full detail, well, not full details, but when the incentive-based nature of his contract was made public, I think 99% of Seahawks fans that commented on my video were ha very happy about it, very positive about the contract. Um, I, I didn't see a whole lot of people being unhappy with it. There were definitely some people unhappy with it when it was $35 million a year. But I, I want to really kind of make concrete the nature of the... I'm going to call it sacrifice, and that's going to sound weird to some people, but I want to make... I want to put in quantifiable terms the sacrifice that Geno Smith has made in this contract. And I want to really, really stress, this was not a little thing. This is big. This is something that goes against pretty much everything that has been happening with QB contracts lately. And in order to illustrate that point, I want to look at the qu contracts of every other quarterback currently active. So I pulled up Spotrack's list of quarterbacks sorted by average annual value. So basically, they take your contract, they divide it by the number of years of the contract, and that's your average annual value. Oh, let me... Okay, that's as big as it can go without the layout freaking out. Okay, so you can see that the guys at the top get paid about $50 million a year, and then it starts to descend from there. Aaron Rodgers is the one quarterback right now who gets an AAV of over $50 million. Russell Wilson, 48.5. Kyler Murray, 46 plus. Deshaun Watson's 46 flat. Patrick Mahomes, 45. So top five guys are getting paid 45 mil to 50.3 mil, I guess you could say. And I, I really want to... Uh, I understand, viewer, not all contracts are built equal. The guarantees are going to be radically different from contract to contract. Like, Russell Wilson's contract has $124 guarantee, million guaranteed in it. Like, half of it was guaranteed, whereas you look at a Deshaun Watson contract, the whole thing is guaranteed. Patrick Mahomes' contract, basically nothing was guaranteed. $63 million out of $450 million. So... I understand that not all contracts are the same, but AAV is a reasonable place to start, and it's going to illustrate the point that I'm trying to make here. Josh Allen, 43 million. And then you've got three guys making 40 mil flat a year. Dak, Stafford, Daniel Jones. Again, the guarantees fluctuate from person to person. I understand that. But AAV-wise, and, you know, these quarterbacks... They have a pretty decent chance of making most of this money, as long as they continue to play even reasonably well, because there's a shortage of quality quarterbacks in the NFL right now. So, I don't think going by AAV is the most ridiculous thing. And then you have Derek Carr, $37.5 million a year on his new contract. And then you have Kirk Cousins, who's on that one-year deal for $35 million. And let's keep in mind here, Geno Smith's original contract and the contract that he will get if and only if he ex he matches every single incentive in his contract, which we don't know what the incentives are yet. You can assume that some of them are going to be doable, like 4,000 passing yards, 30 touchdowns, make the playoffs, have a winning record, play all 17 games. But there are going to be some that are going to be very hard to reach. Win the division. Throw for 40 touchdowns. Throw for 4,500 yards. Make the Super Bowl. Win the Super Bowl. Win MVP. We'll see, but some of the incentives are probably going to be reachable. Some of them are going to be really hard. And by the way, if he matches every incentive in that contract, we're going to be over the moon about it. If he does that, he will not even be top 10 among current quarterback contracts. He will be tied with Kirk Cousins. It's a better contract than Cousins because it's longer term, but even with that, he's not top 10. So even if he manages to basically dominate the league over the next few years, he's not even one of the top 10 biggest quarterback contracts. Keep going. 
Jared Goff, 33 and a half. Lamar Jackson. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing to understand. Lamar Jackson, he's going to get extended by somebody, I think. I, I, it's very hard for me to believe he plays on the tag. And very hard for me to believe some team doesn't just go, screw it, let's just throw $250 million at him. I think it's a terrible idea, but somebody will probably do it, and I kind of get it. I, don't, I, I would never do it in a million years, but I get it. And by the way, when that happens, now Geno Smith's hypothetical best-case scenario contract gets pushed down another spot. Okay, moving on. You got Matt Ryan. Now, this contract's about to get torn up because he's going to get released and he's probably going to be a backup in San Fran or something. You got Ryan Tannehill. Same thing for his contract, but right now it's $29.5 million. Then you get to Geno Smith at $25 million, okay? So we got all the way down here to number 16, and here lies Geno Smith's contract he just got. At number 16, now... Let's think about this for a second here. Think of some of the quarterbacks that are currently lower than Geno Smith on this list. Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert. Both those guys are probably going to get extended this offseason, and those extensions are going to be way more than $25 million AAV. So Geno Smith is going to get pushed back down, even at this $25 million number, to probably 18. Oh, by the way... Jimmy Garoppolo might get a contract that's bigger than this. It's possible. Don't rule it out. If that happens, then he pushes back to 19. So, right off the bat, by the time this offseason ends, Geno Smith's contract is going to be not even in the top half for all starting quarterbacks. It's not even going to be top 16. Because even if you wipe out Matt Ryan, even if you wipe out... Ryan Tannehill, you're boosting up Burrow, Herbert, um, Jimmy G possibly, and maybe even somebody else. Maybe Tua. I don't think so, but maybe. Okay, now let's look at the guys who are below Geno Smith on this list. Let's look at the guys who are making less money AAV than Geno Smith. Jameis Winston, who's probably about to get released because the Saints need the money, so that contract's about to get torn up. He went into the season last year as a starter, so that's one example. Trevor Lawrence, rookie deal. Joe Burrow, rookie deal. That's probably about to get torn up anyway, like I said. Zach Wilson, rookie deal. Trey Lance, rookie deal. Baker Mayfield, rookie deal. Tua, rookie deal. Sam Darnold, rookie deal. Mitchell Trubisky, signed as a get backup slash stopgap. Jimmy Garoppolo, backup slash stopgap. Justin Herbert, rookie deal. Teddy Bridgewater, signed as a pure backup. Case Keenum, signed as a pure backup. Tyrod Taylor signed as a pure backup. Mason Rudolph signed as, by and large, a backup. Justin Fields, rookie deal. It goes on and on and on. So, here's what I'm trying to get at here. Here's what I'm trying to imply. Here's what I'm insinuating with this video. And I want people to keep this in mind when you look at Geno Smith. You look at the contract that he's sitting on. You look at all the financials going around with this... Uh, situation the Seahawks find themselves in. There's a very good chance, a very good chance that by the time the 2023 NFL season starts, every single starting quarterback in the league will be either making more money on an average annual value, value basis than Geno Smith or will be on a rookie deal that they have no ability to get out of. Guys like Trevor Lawrence, guys like Zach Wilson. And Zach Wilson, by the way, might not even be on that rookie deal. Guys like Trey Lance. Most of these guys who are going to be making less money than Geno and starting are going to be doing so because they literally have no choice. That's how the NFL works. So there are going to be a couple exceptions. Like there aren't, there's not exactly an abundance of good quarterbacks right now. So you might see somebody like a Ryan Tannehill get signed for less than $25 million a year to be a stopgap for some random team. You might see Jimmy Garoppolo signed to be a starter for a team for less than $25 million a year. I don't know exactly how they're going to view him. Apparently Houston likes him. Maybe a team signs somebody like a Sam Darnold to be a backup. And then Sam Darnold, or excuse me, not a backup, but a stopgap uh, bridge quarterback, and he's making less than twenty five. There will be a couple in all likelihood. But I want you to think about that. A guy who threw for 4,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, 
made the playoffs, had a winning record, and overcame a bad defense to do all these things, by the way, took a contract that as of right now, and again, he's going to meet some of the incentives, but honestly, it doesn't matter that much. If he meets some of the incentives, he'll only go up by a few million dollars, which isn't really going to put him above anybody here, right? Like, it's not going to probably put him above Goff, who's making eight and a half million more a year. And Ryan and Tannehill are probably going to get their contracts torn up anyway when they get released. So it, it doesn't really matter even on that front. So Geno Smith did all that last year. And he has taken a contract that is the lowest of any veteran starter in the league by the time the season starts. With probably a few exceptions. There are always a few, like, um, washout, stopgap, bridge quarterbacks who start for maybe $12 million at most. But that's kind of crazy when you think about it, right? Especially when you look at some of these contracts that were signed years ago. Jared Goff signed his extension in 2019. Ryan Tannehill signed his extension in 2020. A lot of these contracts are a couple years old. Josh Allen, Dak Prescott. So, I want you to keep that in mind when you're speaking about Geno Smith right now. It's not just the play on the field. It's the fact that he is willingly taking a contract that is possibly going to be the lowest of any starting quarterback that is a veteran past their rookie deal in the 2023 season. If there are quarterbacks who are veterans who are starting making less than Geno Smith AAV-wise, I'll probably be able to count them on one hand. It'll probably be like Darnold, maybe Garoppolo, and maybe one other random guy who I'm not thinking of at the moment. Winston. That's kind of crazy. Think about that for a second here, and, and think about what we see from other players. Like, I never, I don't have a problem with paying a player what he's worth. Like, I didn't have a problem paying Wilson uh, several years ago when he was coming off that really good season in 2018. We gave him $35 million a year, which was pretty much top of the market at the time. I didn't have a problem with it. But here's Geno Smith coming along five years later, taking way less. And by the way, we don't have the particulars on the contract yet. For all we know, there's an easy out after one year if he doesn't play well. That's possible. So in a league full of players where pretty much nobody does this. Nobody does this, ever. It's unthinkable. It's gotten to the point where I, as a fan, never expect any player to do it. Because none of them do it, except for Tom Brady. And Tom Brady's in a very unique circumstance that I can't hold against any other player. Tom Brady's in a bizarre situation where his wife has way more money than he ever will, and the money doesn't matter. Oh yeah, he's getting paid under the table anyway by Bob Kraft through his stupid money laundering pro program. Uh, there are unique circumstances there that do not apply to anybody else. So you look at all these other guys who basically got every dollar they could at every turn. You look at these guys who are getting paid for past performance, guys who are getting paid based off hypotheticals. And it's not just quarterbacks, but it's mostly quarterbacks. And here you have a guy who... Some people, I know people in the comments are going to say, oh, he only got paid that much because he's only worth that much. Sorry, guys, it's not true. It's not even close to being true. Nobody gets paid like this, all right? No quarterback that puts together a good starting caliber season, and Geno Smith was better than good last year, settles for a mid-level deal. They all get paid very close to the top of the market. Go look at what Derek Carr did last year, and he's getting paid way more than Geno Smith. Go look at what Daniel Jones has done his whole career. Daniel Jones hasn't had any season in his career nearly as good as what Geno did last year. Not even close. $40 million a year to twenty-five. And look, I'll, I'll say it again. I don't have a problem paying players what they're worth, but this is a breath of fresh air. And it doesn't feel like you ever see this in the sport anymore. And while I know that Geno Smith is not as good as Patrick Mahomes or he's not as good as Joe Burrow. He's not as good as the best quarterbacks in the league. But it's nice to have that one guy who's willing to just say, you know what, give me enough to make me happy and I'm not going to push or make me earn it at each and every step. So, wow.
All right, let me know what you guys think, but I just had to show appreciation.